So uh, I'm going to go down the line, introduce yourself, gentlemen. Cyrus. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Cyrus. I'm the CEO of ShopX. We make it very easy for store owners to connect their e-commerce to the blockchain for brand loyalty and growth. Um, yeah, and I'm based in Miami. Nice to meet everybody. My name is Jeremy Ryan, also known as NFT Demon. I am the largest artist on the Binance Smart Chain or BNB Chain. And I have my first uh, large scale collection coming out on ETH um, pretty soon. I have a booth downstairs as well if anyone wants to check that out later. Hi, my name is Steve Wall. I'm the director of Web3 Innovation at Sweet. Uh, we are a large brand, league, and entertainment platform and NFT marketplace um, with extremely frictionless onboarding, distribution, and uh, payment rails. Excellent. Yeah, you guys have combined a lot of experience here, so I'm excited to get things kicked off. So Proof of Utility is the name event, um, and utility is can, you know, it's very subjective in the NFT space, as we've probably seen for collectors and for new folks that are coming in. And so I'd like to kind of take that to you, uh, Cyrus, because you, you have some of the better applications I've seen as far as NFTs. What does utility mean going forward? Because NFT utilities in the past were a $500 sweatshirt and a sausage fest party with a bunch of bros, which some people's cup of tea, Cope but not fest. always. <laughs> Cope fest. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, uh, to onboard more users and drive engagement, um, would like to hear how you guys are driving that and what utility really means to you. Yeah, great question. Um, so first, before I get into um, specifics, uh, what is an NFT? <laughs> I think that has been debated because uh, you can have NFTs on multiple chains. Does it make it one of one, one of all chains? Uh, you know, for me, I think what really an NFT embodies is identity. It uses a uh, private key and a public key to identify that you know it's coming from a specific owner, right? And that application could go beyond just JPEGs and stuff to um, like passports, IDs. So whenever I message somebody, they know it's coming from me. That also leads into the open market that the NFT creates. The secondary market of having the ability to send a, uh, a, an asset from a person to a person without a third party that settles instantly, uh, that, that creates a lot of magic in our society and the way we could interact as human beings. And you know what we've done at ShopX specifically is we've tokenized aspects of e-commerce. So membership programs, uh, they're NFTs now. So you know, a user who has like a little card, like a Sephora card or whatever membership you guys have out there, that could be an NFT now that gives you perks and it gives you spe uh, special access to specific items that nobody else could get. Now, the cool thing about having a membership that's been tokenized is that you could sell that membership. So if Sephora is crushing it with sales and more and more people want to get in, there's only a finite um, members in this NFT membership program that they've kicked off. Uh, now you have an asset. So when the brand does well, you know the user also does well. Because brands have been renting users from the likes of Amazon, Google, or Facebook, drive traffic to my site. Hopefully, I capture one of them and convert them into a user. But now um, the users could be part and own the membership program with the brand. So as the membership program increases, both the brand and the user could benefit from it, right? Creating this non-zero sum game. A lot of these economics were not available before the invention of a decentralized um, marketplace that a blockchain could provide us. Um, other things we could do, which is really cool um, for, for those who know Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin solves the double spend problem, meaning I can't send one Bitcoin to two different people. And, and that's really the um, <laughs> the end of banks, in my opinion, right? Because you don't need a central entity to verify took money out of this account and put into another account. Um, and there's a slew of benefits in being impervious to any type of central manipulation, or if it's not a one attack vector for for a uh, um, for a hacker to to get into. But uh, what you could do is you could tokenize inventory as NFTs as well, right? So think of SKUs or UPCs, and this creates the world's database of goods for sale. And when something sells in multiple distribution channels, it solves the double sell problem. How many of you have actually bought something for Christmas just to get an email a week later saying it's out of stock? It's infuriating, it's frustrating. You ruin some kid's um, Christmas, right? Um, you, using blockchain technology to manage inventory will make a huge difference in our supply chain and getting products into your hands faster at the best prices. Well said. 
I think uh, to me, utility is anything that fills an existing need. And so um, anything that fills a need for people can be considered a utility. Uh, how we approach it at Super Gremlin Society is um, we're creating a community around motivation and inspiration, where motivation and inspiration themselves become their own utility. Um, the collection is about my four-year run with brain cancer, which is what gave me my artistic ability. And so we're also giving back to cancer charities that fills a need. Um, and we're all, we also have a metaverse club. A lot of people want to be involved in the metaverse. So we have a metaverse club that will be token gated for holders only. And it's right in, the, in a prime spot of Decentraland. And so that's a utility as well. Um, those are the three utilities that you know we're going after. Um, but I think even uh, community, community is another utility we're going after. And we're trying to get a community that motivates and inspires. And that's what we were, and that's uh, a utility in and of itself. Some of the biggest collections actually have no utility other than community. And so, um, and so, you know, that's uh, some of the, most of the collections to take off these days have no utility other than community. Um, it, and it's true. Most of the ones that, w when they start, they end up getting utility later after they take off because they have all this money and now they, you know, need to do something with it. But uh, most of what takes off in the NFT field right now has no utility. And so, um, so but I think utility uh, has a place. And I think anything that fills a need can be considered utility. I'll take one. Yeah, sure. Um, what I say is probably going to be from more of a retail perspective and that sort of large Web 2 ocean that's still out there. Um, that we're trying to capture and onboard to this insanity. I will say from retail is that when people engage with retail, they expect something right away. Uh, initially, you know, when people were looking to dip, dip their toes into this, it was to capture some revenue, maybe, maybe experiment, check a box here and there. But uh, for the collectors, prestige, showing off, flexing, you know, PFPs, I, I got in, I, I get this, I get the conversation. But now where we're going is a little bit different to where the utility is, uh, there's greater expectations from the user. So that's why we have things like, you know, league access passes, you know, at Sweet we're working with teams in various leagues to provide real experiences where people are in the world, um, where they engage with already regularly. And I can say from a brand perspective, when we talk to them, they see value in being able to hit their consumers where that where they already are, and they do see the value in going back to your earlier point about proving token ownership. You can follow that token anywhere, you know. So there's great utility for the brands and those that put out the collection themselves, just into the public insights they can have over their user base. You can follow the token. You can follow the cookie, the opted-in cookie with agency around to its most relevant user at all times instantly. You don't have to worry about a laggard customer profile uh, that you had in the past. You can follow, you can see who's excited about what you're putting out there in real time. Beautiful. Yeah, and sweet. You guys have done excellent work with a lot of big brands and, and franchises and legacy brands. And I love how you say meeting, meeting retail where they're at because that's, in the beginning, it was it was a lot of hype and marketing and, and, and growth strategies. And so people and projects are going to have to get a lot more creative with their approaches. And you guys have all taken some very creative approaches to those growth. So for founders or people that may want to get involved in the NFT industry, how do you guys like to see and approach uh, growth going forward? Because things that worked six months ago, <laughs> they don't work anymore. So you have to get, think outside the box and, you know, um, from... How, how do you guys uh, think about that? Uh, at least for us at Sweet, um, it's, I know I have innovation in my title, right? But it's, not, it's almost about flipping it it's on its head and agreeing that you don't know exactly where the winners are going to be. You don't know, we don't know exactly where things are going to be from years from now. Everybody in this building is building their own version of what that answer is right now, yeah. <laughs> right? So. Uh, like, we want to make sure that we're building proper onboarding rails and scaffolding to make it all work interoperably and, and easily. So 
it doesn't matter at Suite what chain you want to launch on. We, we can handle that. And the user doesn't need to know that this is a Tezos chain or this is a, a, a polygon, sh polygon chain token. Why can't I trade it? Why don't I have any agency or control over it? Why doesn't it work here or there? We can remove all of that. Same thing with the payment rails. You know, crypto, fiat, whatever you want to do. Same thing with the third party uh, application of what the NFT actually represents. You know, we you can get, grab a hat on the way out. We have POAPs on them, but what that POAP means when you connect your wallet to a different place could be totally different. Could have to do with your shop. You know, mean something at a Shopify store, meaning something tangibly where you are, your Spotify subscription, uh, etc. And Jeremy, do you want to uh, lean in on what you're thinking on that? Yeah, I mean, as far as growth goes, um, in my area of expertise, growth is mainly done through Twitter. And <laughs> so that's uh, Twitter and Discord, and that's how you grow. Um, so, yeah, mine's going to be more the consumer, the average consumer's NFT, um, and that's where they find it and how they find it is through Twitter and Discord. And so that's how projects grow. Um, spaces or any any particular uh, strategies you like to use or have been successful for Twitter and Discord? Um, spaces are really, really helpful. And uh, just posting witty stuff on uh, comments on people's uh, stuff, um, just posting, yeah, just, uh, just really much of anything on particular influencers stuff. If you're quick and you're able to get on real quick, then you're able to get it. The art of shit posting is very key. Like memeing, you know, memeing. We said it was yeah, funny. yeah. <laughs> Industries do move on memes for sure. Um, I would say twofold. Uh, first and foremost, for anybody who's new, new out there trying to get into the space, create a learning framework. We're still in a nascent um, technology and an industry. Nobody, even the experts, are only five, six, seven years in, um, and they're learning. So um, personally, I do something called shuhari. Uh, it's a learning framework from martial arts. Shoe, you follow the master. So pick somebody or somebody that's done something right in the space. Follow them for a few months. Get to understand how they think. And then break off into the ha phase. Start experimenting with your own methods of bringing NFT technologies. In, and then re you become the master. And then you train other people. right? And this is how you push the, um, uh, the world forward is through creating these learning frameworks and then teaching others as what you learn. So that's the first first thing. Um, and it kind of reminds me of like when Web2 first started. Web2 was a cool place that decentralized information, right? Because then I could go into YouTube and learn anything I wanted to learn or whatever it was. Uh, unfortunately, the winning method to monetize Web2 became mining your data and using it against you. <laughs> um, and and we, we could be subject to that in Web3, because I don't think anybody's figured out how to monetize Web3 just yet. Yeah, we've done our ICOs and NFT sales and all that kind of stuff, which is super cool. But what is going to, and we can't monetize data in the same way we monetize data in Web2, because you don't have a central authority on that data. And you, you um, Steve, you're mentioning that you know these NFTs create this public nature of um, ownership. Uh, so I, I could you know track to see what this NFT is doing in secondary markets. That gives insights into brands and other people that need that. So that's great, but where are we going to monetize next, right? So I think I think that that's one thing that you know um, if somebody could figure that out, we'll start moving you know um, the industry in that direction. And it kind of I don't know who mentioned it too is meeting where meeting people where Web two is at, right? Um, building human experience, not user experience. Like you know like I want to have a choice in what I'm doing and. If I have an NFT for membership, I don't want to know it's an NFT. I just want to know it's a, my membership card, and it just happens to be on whatever chain, and I happen to be able to sell it on OpenSea if I wanted to. That's where we know where we get to somewhere really special. Smooth, seamless transactions to facilitate a superior user experience and drive ownership, and that's what you guys have all done and have been excellent. Um, on that on that subject, to segue, uh, as far as, like, ownership and, and getting retail and even institutions involved, um, people basically that aren't as familiar with Web3, how do you see onboarding the next million, 10 million users, which is what all of our mission is collectively to get a lot more people involved? And how are you, you guys and your teams helping make that happen and meeting people where they're at, but thinking outside the box and, you know, a little bit more creative way about it? Yeah, that, that's that's the billion dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> well, we, we have something cool that in December uh, launching for a conservationist at heart, which seems like crazy considering that 
discussion around you know blockchain environmental. and environmental issues yeah. of course which a lot of them are solved for yeah, yeah um but uh joel sartor from uh uh is a photographer um featured national geographic a bunch huge instagram following and he has this project called the photo arc and his mission for the last many years has been to go around the world and photograph every species he could get his hands on mm. in the same way to preserve them, to preserve their Beautiful. images, and to preserve that uh, connection that we have to them because some of them have disappeared since he's photographed them, right? And if you think about uh, the blockchain as a forever internet utility <laughs> that we can access, you know, this is sort of decentralizing the, like that preservation effort amongst all of us, amongst all the nodes, so that those things can last as long as the internet last. So, so that's an example. This is an example of coming to somebody who's, we were, we were able to get that across yeah. to them. I, I think one big example uh, that I deal with on a daily basis, I talk to different marketing firms and different uh, Web2 companies, um, is going to be NFT giveaways. Um, you know, like, like you saw with Macy's during the Thanksgiving Day Parade just recently, you know, they just yeah. gave away a bunch of NFTs. Pepsi did an NFT giveaway, and it's still at the peak. It was like three Ethereum. Now it's like 0.3, but it's still a pretty decent thing. And that gives you NFT giveaways for corporations, um, gives people an ability to kind of connect with the brand in a way that they don't have otherwise. And it gives the brand an ability to create a community around the brand as well. And so that's something that I'm doing on a daily basis is trying to bridge those connections and talk with the, the people that need to be talked to about how we get corporations to do these giveaways. And also talking to uh, Web3 Web three companies like OKX I've been ta uh, talking to for like six months. Like, why the hell do we not have any of these exchanges, all of the exchanges? Why the hell do none of these exchanges have an NFT collection, but all these Web2 companies do that they gave away? It doesn't Question. make any sense. Why do none of these Web3 companies have giveaways, but all these Web2 companies do? It doesn't make any sense. So, um, I, so, I'm, so that's one way that I think we're going to bridge a whole lot of people. Yeah, I think there is a Web3 prophecy here before we could get all you know, millions of users onto blockchain. Um, and call me biased, but I think that retail and shopping is a universal language, and we're going to do it through there <laughs> and not through DeFi. <laughs> DeFi is not going to be our path to getting everybody onto blockchain because banks, PayPal, Stripe, they have a mafia. They're not going to let that shit happen. They crash Luna. They, I mean, USDT, USDC, they're under large scrutiny right now. It's not going to be through DeFi. So the first thing is we need to get users onto uh, the blockchain. How do we do that? Through retail. Why does retail do it? Because they're simps. Brands are <laughs> simps because they need to hit their Wall Street expectations. So they'll do anything to acquire a customer. ShopX is right now, we're kind of like a Trojan horse. We're getting in there. We've already onboarded thousands of users onto membership programs for these brands. And once we get that, at some point, we're going to be able to pay brands in crypto. Uh, our company doesn't do that yet. And I know you could do that today, but it's still not mainstream. It's still not easy. Once that happens, once we have enough users onto these membership programs and all these brands are like, oh my God, we have all these wallets and access to all these players, let's enable crypto payments. Stripe, PayPal, they're going to take a pretty big hit. I mean, Shopify stock is down huge because half their money comes from Stripe processing fees. So once that happens, once crypto payments are enabled, brands could then start taking crypto payments and they will start paying their employees in crypto. Once they start paying their employees in crypto, employees can then take their crypto and pay rent because they're, they're going to have no choice because the currency is going to be crypto. Once you start paying rent, banks can't have a stronghold by you know lending out ridiculous amounts of money on the real estate. Real estate market will correct into more, I mean, if you look at past 30, 40, 50 years, real estate market has skyrocketed, pay hasn't. You've seen tons of like TikTok reels or Instagram reels on explaining what, what's happening. But I, th I think that's what's going to have to happen before we get to that point. But it all starts with adding some sort of utility. And I think that brands, like I said, biggest simps, um, let's hit them hard and let's get all users onto crypto um, and blockchain through um, e-commerce. Yeah. Can I I just want to add on to that a little Please. bit so we can discuss the, the like, 
meeting people where they are consists of meeting people where they are with those brands already. And it requires us to admit that, I'm going to quote a good friend of mine, Yevoy Cole, he says, you are the genius of you. So we can admit to the brands that have spent billions of dollars on Web2 based advertising and profiling of their user base and the best way to spend that money on the internet. We can trust them and say to them that you are the genius of you. We will build the you know your clients best, you know what to do best, we can advise, and we can provide you the rails to, to do whatever you want. And if we're believing in this you know, crypto movement as the wave of the future, it's got to be able to handle whales, too, that want to work on the Web 2 side of the spectrum as well as the Web 3 side of the spectrum. The beauty is that we all have a choice, right? And this, unlike the internet, which was like so confusing using at least to the start of it at, at my age at the time, like <laughs> there is uh, transparency. There's built-in transparency, right? So people can are at least by default able to make more informed choices, even when it's a free drop from the Super Bowl but from Kia. That, that could also be scary because you're trusting not a person, you're trusting a board and a bunch of LPs and Wall Street that they just care about one thing and it's the bottom line. The suits. And we've seen this happen many times over again with Enron and most recently with FTX. Like, uh, yeah, I, and, and then how is the blockchain made? How are NFTs made? I could code in the NFT contract that I could revoke the NFT whenever I want. Is that truly an NFT? Is it truly blockchain? Is the govern what's the governing mechanism? There's a lot of questions but, uh, the, behind it. I agree, and, and I don't, well, not but, it's a really an and. Like, if we're, if the chain is open, people can always do that. People right. can scam people, it's bad. Right, I <laughs> so I, I, think, I think we're agreeing yeah. on the same thing, which we haven't said is education. Um, educating users on crypto, what does crypto mean, what does NFT mean, what is a blockchain, um, going through that, and whoever could figure that out too. I, I know my crypto, I uh, started doing it a little bit, and <laughs> um, Taylor, the CEO, she literally created the UI that was really frustrating to use because you couldn't just click on, okay, 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 and she changed the box. She made people read, and I, I don't know whatever tactics that people have to take, create videos, TikTok, or whatever. We need to start educating people um, on on this technology and what it means. And what we could means. show them the value of paying attention. And the technology has been there for several years for retail to be able to take payments in crypto. I think what, and they've just been resistant to it. I think what may end up happening before that to get millions of people is car titles and house deeds. Uh, I think that might happen before. That's been a good way for me to explain to people the concept yeah. of what an NFT is, is the car title metal metaphor. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Got to break it down, um, break it down to where they're at. And I think I, I agree. Those are going to be some amazing utilities. And, um, you know, briefly from each of you guys to 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 bring in that uh, the new retail and experienced investors um, for you know, the, those applications on real world assets tying in, you're working with e-commerce, you're working with a lot of legacy brands, you're doing amazing work for charities. Um, uh, where it, it, that accessibility with wallets, I see is big and one of the biggest chokeholds and that UX UI, um, what are you excited about uh, going forward here for, for the next year or two that's going to, uh, uh, whether it's on the wallet side, whether it's on exchanges that are launching some NFT. Pipes. 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 Interoperability pipes, good scaffolding. Uh, this is what I'm. I'm excited for. I'm excited for more coordination from from brands and teams and just groups of people that realize like they. It you may have been able to like launch an island in a bubble market, and now you have to like run this startup for the rest of your life. Otherwise, you're a jerk and you're <laughs> rugging people. Okay, but we can say to to folks if we get the message across right. Like, we're about to do our third drop with Kia, and all of them were distributed in different ways. All of them were, were with different organizations. And if they wanted to be, they could all have been on different chains, right? Like, we, we, can, um, we, can, we can form that bridge and, and develop interoperability. I don't even want to say standards, but just like possibilities for it all to work together as we go forward, so we're not like reset butting ourselves all the time. I think I'm most excited for the next bull run. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Are we all? <laughs> yeah. I got to get in now. <laughs> but uh, actually, I think uh, I think there's going to be just a whole lot of way. I think there's going to be a culling 
and um, and and a lot of these projects are going to fizzle out, and the the strong will survive. And I'm looking forward to that because once that happens, then it's not so uh, hard for the average person to figure out. I want this or, or that or the other thing. Um, there's just so many options and so many different projects right now that it makes it really difficult for the average person. The average person is a dumb fuck, and we got to realize that. Uh, we got to realize the <laughs> average person is dumb as shit. One out of four is and a dumb f. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the average person is dumb as shit and can't process too much information. And so you have to take that reality a into consideration. And there's too many different coins and too many different chains and too many different everything else. And some of that, a lot of that is going to end up failing and, and it's going to end up being the strong survive. And uh, I look forward to that time because that'll be a time when it'll be easier for people, um, the average person who's dumb as fuck, to get behind it. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if everybody's dumb as fuck, but... <laughs> The average person. They, they forgot. I mean, I, I believe everybody's creative, resourceful, and whole. And yes. I do think there has been a lot of um, media <laughs> washing, you know, like music instead of being 432, being 440 hertz. And it programs your head to not think critically. Um, so if there's any way we could wake people up. That's a deep one. I know that one. I know. <laughs> I've heard of that one. Yeah. yeah. Program or be programmed. Yeah, really, really. But okay. But. Um, <laughs> I do agree. Consolidation is going to be a great thing. Um, there's too many shit coins on the market right now yeah. to really keep up. But I'll, I'll go another way. I'm a geek. I'm a nerd. Um, I think the technology is finally here for scaling, and that's called ZK rollups. Uh, zero knowledge. If you haven't looked into it, look into it. Um, there's a couple of companies, uh, ZK Zinc and Starkware. I think they're leading the the pack. Um, and I do think this uh, this creates um, the the scalability needed for Ethereum to to hit mainstream in Web2 companies and brands and corporations. And that's been one of our biggest unlocks this year at ShopX is starting to integrate and work with these ZK providers to be able to do hundreds of thousands of transactions, whether if it's private or public, it's up to the brand to decide. And I like how you said, Steve, you'd be empathetic towards Web2 yep. partners, right? Yep. Understand that they want to be Web3, but their industry, their processes, they everything. They spent money. Yeah. Absolutely. They have money spent yeah. and they want to they want to know that they can still use that. Yeah. Like that value that they yeah. created. Yeah. There's going to there, like you're gonna, we're going to have we're in a bridge phase right now. We're, we're, we're the creators are building a bridge from web 2 to web 3. You're still going to have to operate in both worlds. At some point it'll be amazing once we're on web 3, but um, that's going to still be 10, 15, 20 years to come. Beautifully said. Gentlemen, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Thank, thank you. you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it up for these gentlemen. Hey, grab a all. hat. Grab a hat on the way out. We've got some utility there. There's an NFT on it for you. See, see these, are, these, are <laughs> the, these are the smart people. These are the ones that like the information. And, the, yeah, we have some brilliant attendees, <laughs> some brilliant minds. Thank you all so much for joining us. The proof of utility. Make sure to follow these gentlemen online, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. And have an amazing day.